Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm your host, The Mighty Bjorn, and today for you I have a sprocket tutorial video. Just gonna show you a couple little things. This is stuff that I commonly get asked when I'm in the Discord, plus I'm also gonna show a couple other little things here that people may not know of. I actually found the one by accident. So let's just dive on into it here, make things happen, and get this tutorial underway. So as you can see here, I'm actually currently working on a vehicle. I'm trying to essentially recreate a E25 here is what I'm trying to do. Now the first thing I'm going to show is I'm going to show the spare track links. We'll start there. Now with the spare track links, what you have to be is you have to be in the mobility tab. You have to be on tracks and then you have to be on spare tracks and then you can place your tracks. Now the tracks can actually be linked together. Well, not very right on, but that'll work. Um, that way it makes one, instead of having two individual small sections, you have like one longer section, as well as they can be rotated. However, you can also just place one, turn off mirror, and then I just have one. However, they cannot be scaled. To scale things, you hold shift and scroll wheel up and down. They can't be scaled. They are automatically scaled and styled to whatever tracks you have equipped on the vehicle. Um, and that being said, to if you do decide to change your tracks, maybe you decide to narrow them or change the style, you have to remove this piece of spare track, delete it, and replace that spare track that are uh, that way you have to replace that spare track so your new style track is on the vehicle. And essentially, it's just an, a visual thing. That's all it is. Now, the crew stuff. The crew stuff can be placed and scaled. And I'm going to show you how to do that here. I'll show you how to do it with this little machine gun turret I have up here on top of my E25. And essentially, I'll click on that. I'll hold shift, and I can scroll wheel up and down to scale it. And then if I hold Q, it'll turn it to the left. And if I hold E, it'll turn it to the right. And then I could just find the lo rough location or where I want it. And place it. And there we go. That's placed. And that's all this stuff here in the crew section that can be done. You can do that too. Um, here, let's do a cargo container. There we go. Not very hard. And it can be rotated. Well, actually, I don't think the cargo containers can be. Some items can be rotated. Some items can't be rotated. And uh, I believe there might be a few. Actually, no, I don't. I think everything is scalable in this section, in the crew section, the crew tab. Now, there is a couple things that are required. One is a gunnery sight is required. However, I do believe some of the gun mantlets themselves has a gunnery sight. Not all, just some. Like I believe with, let's go to the tab. I believe with this type of mantlet here, you ha also have to have a gunnery sight as well as with this square one. You have to have a separate gunnery sight, which is in the crew section and its viewports. And it's the one with the targeting bullseye on it. That's your gunnery sight. But some, man like I said, most of the mantlets actually has a gunnery sight on them. A driver sight is required as well. Here I actually have two mounted, which I actually kind of botched the location. I might just have to redo those. Okay, next thing I'm going to show you here is decals and paint. This is actually one thing of this is actually probably one of the more commonly asked questions, especially the decals. So we'll cover the decals first and I'll cover some things. I had found out with the paint recently as well. Now to place a decal, what you need to do is, is have, of course, you need to have delivery and then you need to have decals and then click left click place decal. Scale it, get it roughly where you want it, place it. Now, once you do that, you right click on this 
sprocket. This is essentially your your decal source. This is where your decal is going to be placed. And then you pick the decal where you want to place it. Now, that being said, once you place the decal, you just have to left click. You can move it. You can, uh, you can scale it. And you can even rotate it. You can also place two decals at once. All you need to do is have mirror on. Place decal. And there you go. You got two decals. Now, that being said... Wherever you have, whenever you're doing mirror decals, whatever happens to one happens to the other. Now, to change the source, once again, I right click on the source, white circle pops up, pick the decal, and there you go. And you, as you can see, you can also have different decals. You have all the decals on the vehicle all over the place if you want. You just got to keep placing different sources for those decals. And once again, whatever I do to one is whatever I do to the other. It's just like having mirrored parts. So if you mirrored parts, whatever you do to one happens automatically to the other. And then the remove them, you just left click on it and right click. And then it deletes that part. Now the next thing, we'll go over paint. Now, this is the default base, your X. So here, let's slap some camo on it. There is some camo on the vehicle. Now to get rid of it, I could just hit X or I could hit a different camo or I could hit paint. Yes, you'd actually paint the vehicle. That's what this is. Your sliders are to change the colors of the paint. However, that being said, this is something I just found out recently. The color of your camos and the scale can be changed. So as you can see, I'm changing the scale right now. I can actually change the roughness of the paint, which also kind of changes the color a little bit as well. I can also change the color of it in general and remove saturation, change saturation. So the camo paints can be edited. I'm sure a lot of people knew that you could paint the vehicles themselves, but didn't necessarily know that you could actually it's, you know, it's a decent, it's a very simplified yet advanced editing system for the camos because you can actually change the scale. You can even add dirt effects to it. You can actually change the condition of it where it becomes more bare metal or base coat than actually paint. So there you go, folks. How about that? You can actually change the uh, camo patterns as well, which is actually kind of cool. Even though there's only a couple camos in the game, it actually does add a little bit more variety to what is there available in the game. Uh, just show you two things here I did really quick. Now, this B4, that's just how it is in the files. Okay. Now, I actually used the same camo pattern here on my black prints. But then my Matilda. Oh, I clicked something wrong. Hold on, let me get rid of... Uh, there we go. As you can see, the Matilda, I changed the scale. That way it changed the pattern itself, even though it's actually the same color palette. Well, it's roughly the same color palette. It's actually slightly modified color palette as well. But yeah, so there you go, folks. That's actually going to do it for me. That is, uh, that is my Sprocket tutorial on how to deal with decals, deal with objects, things of that nature. Anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you find it useful and have yourself a wonderful day.